Good evening, hello and welcome to the special broadcast. I'm Anusha Soni. Our island neighbour country, Sri Lanka, faces a huge economic and political crisis. Sri Lanka owes about $51 billion to its foreign lenders. Protest continues unabated across uh, the country and especially at a time when Ranil Vikram Singh has taken over as the new president. Most protesters allege that he's the stooge of the Rajapaksas, a charge that he completely denies. Now, to quell the protests, he has thrown the might of the army on the ground. Was this a big political mistake? Especially at a time when the challenge for the political class is to build more trust with the general public. That's our top story this hour. Let's begin with this report. <laughs> Hours after Ranil Vikramasinghe was sworn in as the president of Sri Lanka, the crackdown began. Security forces raided anti-government protest camps in Colombo. Late into the night, soldiers in riot gear, armed with assault rifles, marched through the area where rows of tents of protesters stood on both sides of the road in front of the president's secretariat. And they tore down the Gota Gogama camps and allegedly assaulted the protesters. Entry to the golf face protest site in Colombo was blocked and barricaded by security personnel amid the late night clampdown. As daylight broke, the road to the office of the president was completely cleared. Security forces took control of the entire secretariat, which was recently stormed by thousands of protesters. जो बॉर्डर्स के जवान हैं, वो सड़कों पर उतर कर आ गए हैं और एक तरफ जो है ये प्रदर्शनकारी जो है वो लगातार यहाँ पर तैनात हैं इनकी तरफ से लगातार नारेबाजी जो है की जा रही है। Protesters had feared a crackdown by Vikram Singh, who is seen as an ally of the Rajapaksas. They are going to destroy us, but we never give up. We are the people who want to lose. Who want to clean this nasty politic? Vikram Singh was sworn in on Thursday after winning a parliamentary vote. He in turn appointed another Rajapaksa ally, Dinesh Gunavardhane, as Prime Minister. While Vikram Singh has vowed to pull Sri Lanka out of a crippling economic crisis, will the brutal crackdown on protesters? further fuel the fire that has been spreading through the country for more than 100 days. Well, let's take this discussion forward. Let's talk about this crackdown on the Lankan protesters and will it further fuel the fire? What exactly is the core, uh, course ahead for our the country and how is it that economic, political stability can once again be ensured in the neighbour country of Sri Lanka. Joining us on the broadcast is our special panel of guests, Mr. Ashok Sajjanar, who is a former diplomat, will be with us in just few minutes from now. We have Mr. Ramjad Maulana, who is an activist, also somebody who has participated in these protests. Dr. P. Sarvanamuttu, who is the founder and executive director of Centre for Policy Alternatives, a member of the Foreign Policy Advisory Group, is also joining us on the broadcast. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on the show. My first question to you, uh, Dr. Sarvanamuttu, what is the course ahead? Do you think it was a huge political mistake to unleash the might of the military forces or the army on the protesters? Yes, I think it was a mistake and it has cast a major block over the possibility of this government returning the country to democratic governance and economic uh, recovery. Hmm. The point is that the protesters are determined to continue with their protests. There should have been debate and discussion. They were willing to give up the locations that they had taken before the army stormed in and kicked them out. So it's really quite unfortunate that this has happened. And, you know, as one of the very first acts of the Vikram Singer government, it casts serious doubt mm. over the commitment to democratic governance. Mm. As somebody who has observed the foreign policy very closely, Mr. Sajjanar, I'm coming to you. What is the course ahead? How is it that any degree of trust can be restored between the protesters and the present political establishment? You know, there are two things that are being And uh, the first one is the protests, as you said, rightly, yeah. have been going on for the last 100 days or so. 
But uh, that notwithstanding, there is not a single leader that has emerged as far as these protests are concerned. So the se and the second point is whatever has to be done, it should be done, you know, as the uh, earlier gentleman also said, hmm. uh, through democratic means, uh, through constitutional means. Hmm. So the, uh, uh, the letter and the spirit of the constitution has to be respected. Hmm. And I think if uh, there is uh, first an acting president uh, that uh, the country got and then he was uh, uh, chosen to be the president by the parliament, I think the protesters uh, should uh, uh, calm down, give an opportunity hmm. to the uh, democratically uh, installed uh, uh, president yeah. to uh, take matters in his hand, uh, negotiate with the uh, IMF, because hmm. uh, you know only when there is a semblance of stability hmm. and peace and tranquility in the country True. Will uh, the country be able to negotiate either with the IMF, ADB, World Bank, or with the other donors? Mm. Uh, so mm. the peace, uh, political peace and tranquility is uh, absolutely essential. For so any kind is, of, for uh, any know, kind of economic recovery of the country. Go on. Yeah, that's a, that's a point very well made, uh, Mr. Sajinar. Amjad Malana, um, the protests so far have not been in many ways they've been fragmented in nature which is the nature of modern social movements as well but the fact that there is no single unified leadership it makes the negotiation with the present government even more difficult uh, do you think these sustained protests will really lead the country on the right path or perhaps the protesters should allow the government to do their job and perhaps then think of a you know government change through a drama democratic process at the right time discussion at the moment see the common denominator to the protest was that uh, everyone banded together to actually send home the Rajapaksha and end a regime of, that was mired with corruption. Hmm. Uh, so it was made up of a diverse melting pot of people from various walks of life and various political ideologies. Yes. So there is no singular leader to the protest, although there are various groups and those groups have uh, their own leadership. Hmm. Um, but with respect to the the, what the previous speaker also mentioned is that we were more than willing to actually give back these protest sites. Mm. We wanted to restore mm. uh, peace and tranquility. That was one of the biggest reasons why yesterday we issued a statement stating that we would be actually uh, releasing and vacating the presidential secretariat, which was the only uh, property, public property that we yeah. were holding on to. Yeah. Uh, and we had released all the other properties as well. Mm. Um, and we released that statement yesterday, expecting to release this property uh, by 2 p.m. this afternoon. Hmm. However, this morning, uh, early this morning, when we least expected it, when we expected to actually vacate over the course of today, hmm. uh, we were chased away brutally by the military goons of yes. this current president, hmm. um, which was unnecessary and unprovoked. Hmm. So in, in terms of actually bring, establishing trust with the people of Sri Lanka, which we actually expected, we were willing to mutually agree with him on that mm. um that that trust is now far no, from and, being and you're echoing the same sentiments that dr p sarvanamuthu and ashok sajnahar both said that there needs to be a certain degree of trust and political stability for any kind of economic recovery of the country uh, i just request all of you to stay with us on the broadcast because my colleague punima murli is reporting from the ground she's in sri lanka she's live from colombo getting us all the updates punima tell us what you're seeing around you how's the situation on the ground Well, there's a calm before the big storm because uh, in many places from the airport towards uh, the, the protest site, there are heavy security deployment, uh, especially in and around the airport. And you can see a lot of security officials deployed uh, at the protest site uh, where it leads to the presidential secretary because that's where many, um, there, that's where many security uh, personnel have been deployed. But in and around, you can see that there's normal movement uh, on the roads, but at certain checkpoints, there are security personnel deployed, uh, but at the moment, the uh, situation is under control because many protesters uh, were, uh, were assaulted uh, in the wee hours today. Uh, some of them have uh, shifted to another venue, but uh, protests are only intensifying and the anger towards uh, Ranil is uh, intensifying considering that uh, there were, uh, there were uh, military troops that raided uh, early today and uh, many of them, including a few journalists, were also attacked. At the moment, uh, at the, moment uh, the situation continues to remain tense in yeah. Colombo uh, and 
uh, and across Colombo as well, not just at the golf phase, because police, uh, police deployment, security deployment, uh, 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 you can see that in and around uh, Colombo as well. All right, so those are the live visuals that my colleague Poonima Muli is getting us from the ground. Poonima, um, the guests on the show, and we have Mr. Amjad Maulana, who himself has been observing these protests, have been a part of it, says that there was a certain degree of trust or perhaps some middle ground that could have been reached between the protesters and the present political establishment. The manner in which the crackdown was put on the protesters uh, last night is something that was unexpected and uncalled for. After yesterday's incident, uh, an uneasy calm that we can see on the street of Colombo but what are your sources telling you what are the indications from the protesters what can be seen in the next 24 hours Well, protesters were planning to hold a press conference this afternoon and they were also trying to uh, uh, call off uh, the, the protest or leave the protest site, especially the presidential secretariat, mm. uh, which uh, has been occupied by them uh, for more than three months, for more than 100 days. However, even as they promised to ensure that they will vacate the presidential secretariat, like how they did vacate uh, the, the presidential palace as well as the prime minister's office last week, uh, they in fact promised and suddenly this uh, crackdown on protesters, assaulting them, dismantling tents uh, that belong to the deaf and dumb. All these uh, have not gone down well with the protesters. They didn't see this coming because they already wanted uh, to hold talks with Ranil and, uh, uh, and his team to ensure that they come to a consensus. However, even before that could happen, uh, uh, the, the, there were sudden raids by the military troops and many protesters say that they were assaulted mm. and those who were trying to record videos of the military troops entering the golf phase uh, those were the ones who were attacked. A few journalists were also attacked in the process and uh, the situation is tense. There's an uneasy calm uh, at the moment because uh, military yeah. troops uh, have completely occupied the golf phase. That area is completely blocked on both sides, heavily barricaded on both sides. Punima, my last question to you, uh, you know, apart from this political crisis, at the heart of the issue is an economic crisis, an unprecedented situation that millions of Sri Lankans are facing today in terms of food supply, even basic fuel, uh, schools have been shut in multiple parts of the country. How hard and difficult is life in Sri Lanka as of today? It's getting worse by the day, especially when it comes to uh, finding petrol stations that have fuel. Uh, filling fuel is something that's impossible. At least people wait for two to three days to get uh, fuel refilled. Apart from that, even if the middle class has money to buy things, it's not easy to buy uh, essential commodities. For those families who have children, finding uh, milk powder is something uh, that's not very easy. So it's only worsening by the day. Even uh, Ranil, when he was the prime minister, said that it's only going to get worse before it gets better so uh, it uh, and uh, he uh, has in fact uh, promised that by next year uh, Sri Lanka would uh, bounce back and uh, things would be normal but at least one year is is the timeline that he's giving for the crisis uh, to to uh, to end but at the moment people are struggling many of them even if they have money are not able to uh, buy the essential commodities and that's the challenge and that's the anger that we've seen uh, from Sri Lankans especially especially with the ruling party and the Rajapakshas. Punima, before I let you go, this has been a scattered protest without any single leader. Multiple groups are protesting. Do you see the protests in the next 24 to 48 hours intensifying further or perhaps the protesters will buckle down under the pressure? Well, earlier today, uh, uh, protesters gathered outside uh, the Colombo Fort station and the protesters a uh, protest was, uh, was only swelling there yeah. uh, that's where uh, there was more anger directed towards ranil uh, mm. apart from golf face uh, at the fort uh, station outside the fort railway station uh, there were protesters who gathered and many more yes. uh, joined them so they are not going to give up considering that there was a crackdown late last night and many of them were assaulted so uh, it's only going to get worse is what uh, is, is is what mm. we are hearing mm. because protesters refuse to give up and they think that it's time for all of them to st stay united and stay strong and voice out their views against uh, Ranil as well. Thank you, Poonima. Uh, as my colleague Poonima Murli, she will continue to report from ground in Colombo, getting you all the updates about the country which is facing an unprecedented political and economic crisis. Mr. Ashok Sajna, Ramjad Malana and Dr. P. Sarvanamuthu continue to stay with us on the broadcast. Uh, Dr. Sarvanamuthu, I'm coming back to you, sir.
keeping in mind that these are protests which do not have a single leader which can sit on the table and talk to the political establishment the kind of action that happened last night the the brutal crackdown is something that many would say was a political mistake should not have been done but what is the way forward for restoring any kind of political stability not just in the political quarters in the corridors but also on the streets of sri lanka well i mean i think the first thing that needs to happen is with regard to what happened last night mm. and i think the president needs to provide an apology to the innocent protesters that it was entirely wrong uh, in terms of the violence that was perpetrated upon them and there should be some sort of inquiry into it mm. but beyond that i think politically he needs to set a timetable in terms of when the next elections are going to be and what is going to be done with regard to the presidency and i think what needs to be done is abolition mm. whilst he does that then he has to continue with the imf and uh, arriving at a staff agreement mm. and also in the meantime making sure that the fuel queues are shortened and that we do have gas and petrol mm. and fuel um, to get on with our daily lives dr sarvanamuthu i have a i have a follow up question to that do you think that the present leadership that the present political establishment has that kind of political foresight keeping in mind that they took a wrong decision to crack down on the protesters because anything less than an apology would not work do you think that they can put out a timetable like that and more importantly do the people out on the streets protesting in sri lanka really have that kind of patience well i hope so i hope and pray that that is the case or else we are then you know consigned to a future of political instability and economic uh, hardship hmm. they have to think in those terms they have to think in terms of how they can win the trust and confidence of the people of this country because when the imf agreement comes through there are sacrifices that people have to make and they can only make it if they have trust and confidence in a government that's asking them to make it hmm. on their behalf hmm. you know so we need to everyone needs to sit down and consider the dire nature of the situation and work according to a notion of national interest rather than particular interest so the government has to win public trust and confidence there is no other way the public trust and confidence that's the slippery slope amjad malana i'm coming to you do you think that an apology by the present political establishment anything less than a uh, apology would it suffice for the protesters how do you see the protests on the streets in the next 24 to 48 hours well like dr savarna muthu just said as well uh an apology would you know it would scratch the surface mm. but you know we were willing to compromise and we were willing to actually give the new president an actual shot to uh, go about in setting about his plans for economic revival uh and also he has pledged to go about the abolition of the executive presidency as mm. well so these are all aligned with what our expectations are even though he was not the ideal candidate for the job mm. and we were willing to compromise on that and give him an actual shot to go about and do that yeah unfortunately at this point with the crackdown which was on which was completely unnecessary and unprovoked um i think an apology would just scratch the surface because at this point in time uh the fury in the streets is running high the tension is running high just when we thought that there was a light at the end of the tunnel um it doesn't seem to be getting any better so i think it's best that the president and the new government and the new cabinet that have been formed uh even though it's just pretty much a mirror image of what it was before uh they get their act together and start delivering to the people especially with respect to winning the trust of the people like what dr savarna motu alluded to as well how will they win your trust that's the million dollar question amjad go ahead i'm asking you that how will how will the political establishment you know uh, really uh, win your trust because that's the million dollar question keeping in mind that there's a fierce standoff that has happened all kinds of theories about the present political establishment being in hand in gloves with the rajapaksas what is it that the government will do that the protesters will really trust them i think they should actually set a horizon with respect to um the elections hmm. setting a date for the elections as well because date, this yeah. government this presidency uh, what we witnessed with the election of this president does not reflect the mandate of the people um so it's essential that in order to go about uh, the austerity measures that they would indefinitely would definitely have to enact hmm. uh when it comes about with the IMF program and so on and so forth to win the trust of the people to go about in doing that hmm. they'll need to set horizon they'll need to set uh, a good timetable hmm. and go about in enacting that and meeting that Okay. so that the people's trust uh in some shape or form can be won
Mr. Sajjan, are coming to you and talking to you about a very critical aspect we are keenly watching. India has also extended all kind of help that it can, whether humanitarian or in terms of monetary help that can be given to the neighbor country. What are the Indian interests in Sri Lanka in terms of having a healthy neighborhood? And what are the key critical areas India should really keenly watch for? Because all sorts of conspiracy theories have been doing the rounds about the intervention of other you know, foreign powers and the protests that we are witnessing or which way Sri Lanka will really go. Vis-a-vis -vis India, your perspective. Yeah, a couple of points here, Anusha. One is that India has uh, very uh, studiously kept away as far as the political turmoil in the country is concerned. Yeah. You know, and this is uh, the policy that has been uh, adopted by this government. And it's not only with Sri Lanka, with wherever, you know, there have been such type of uh, or uh, difficulties, political difficulties, yeah. uh, domestically, internally, yeah. India has uh, stayed away, uh, you know, and even as far as elections are concerned anywhere, India has very, uh, uh, you know, made it a point to stay away. So as far as the politics of uh, the country is concerned, it is that country which has to, the people of that country sure. which have uh, to resolve it, the leadership of that country has to resolve it. Yeah. And that is a point that has been made uh, over and over again and very clearly by the Indian leadership yeah. that we are not going to get involved as far as the politics of that country is concerned. That's right. Now on the economics, as you said very rightly, we have been helping uh, uh, I think uh, the assistance and the support that has been provided by India, whether in loans, credit lines, credit swaps, uh, food, medicines, uh, fuel, et cetera. Mm. I think that has uh, been exemplary and we have made it uh, again very clear that it is not related to any particular government in power. It is for the people of that country, exactly like, you know, yeah. even in the case of, I meaning just to give you an example of the there might be differences yeah. in Afghanistan. Absolutely. We have not recognized yeah. the Taliban government, but we mm. are supplying 50,000 tons of wheat and uh, medicines and uh, uh, other essential commodities. Mm. So basically, whatever uh, assistance and support is going from India, it is for the people of that country because of the old historic, uh, historical, uh, civilizational, cultural ties that we have with that country. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not wish uh, instability we, uh, in uh, any part of our neighborhood mm -hmm. because we would really like to focus on uh, development within our own country, development, uh, good relations with our neighbors. And if there is instability of this nature, if it uh, continues, yeah. then it is uh, harmful for uh, that country and for the region. Absolutely. The geostrategic uh, 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 situation of Sri Lanka mm. is very important. So it is particularly uh, uh, significant, particularly uh, relevant that we should have peace and uh, security and stability. The last point that I'd like to make here, Anusha, is yeah. You know, obviously, there has been a huge misunderstanding because uh, both the parties, uh, uh, you know, whether it is uh, Mr. Ranil Vikramasinghe or the protesters, they have been making uh, statements and comments against each other. Yeah. When Mr. Rajapaksa left, then it was the protesters said that Ranil would also have to go. Mm. Obviously, there has been a huge misunderstanding, lack of communication. And uh, something needs to be done since uh, Mr. Ranil Vikramasinghe has the authority, has the power. And, you know, there is a uh, saying in uh, uh, Hindi, in yeah. English, that it yeah. is only the powerful who can sort of, you know, try to reach out. So yeah. maybe the responsibility devolves upon uh, the administration. First of all, uh, ask for an investigation. And, and Mr. Sajjanar, I, I want to pick up. I want to pick up a very critical point that you made, which was about communication. Dr. Sarvana Mathu, um, in a in a crisis, communication, I believe, is the most critical aspect to quell a crisis, to reach a resolution, and to ensure that there is a certain degree of relative peace and stability that can be ensured in a region. Keeping with the kind of steps, keeping in mind the kind of steps that Ranil Vikram Singh has taken in the last 24 hours. It doesn't seem that he has the right communication strategy in place. Would you agree? Well, certainly. I mean, the raid last night on the protesters were entirely the wrong communication strategy. They were willing to give him time. And he should have seized the opportunity of time hmm. to reestablish a degree of trust and confidence that he was the right person to be president, even though he was voted in by a parliament, which is not 
expressive of public opinion at the present moment. Mm. No, it, it certainly needs to brush up that communication strategy. And people will, at the end of the day, only believe in mm. and sacrifice is needed in a government that has their trust and confidence, mm. who they feel that they share the same sort of destiny with and share the same interests in. That is why elections are tremendously important. You, you spoke about uh, setting a date for elections. That's something that Amjad also talked about, that one of the critical steps in restoring some kind of trust will be to set a date of election. More importantly, to get economy relatively back on track, you know, get some money from the IMF or, or the international community that can really ha uh, help. But what is the time frame that Sri Lankans can really look at? Is it in the next six months? Is it in the next one year? Amjad, do you want to take that question? That what is the time frame that... Uh, informed protester or an ordinary Sri Lankan who's concerned is really looking at? Ideally, we're looking at to have it as soon as possible. Hmm. Um, I don't think it's a matter of cost anymore because we have seen that we've spent a whole lot more on a bunch of uh, programs that were unnecessary. Hmm. So I think an election is the need of the hour. But in addition to that, I think at this point in time, of course, we need to work on getting our economy back on track and get people back to work. I mean, the reason why we are protesting is because our livelihoods are gone. That's why we're in the streets. So ideally, if, if, if there is, um, and, and we were willing to extend the olive branch, which we did last night, which okay. the, the president uh, did not, was not willing to accept. Okay. So I think more than anything, obviously we do need elections. Okay. We do need a definite date for the election on the horizon. Okay. Uh, but in the interim period, there needs to be a bit of give and take uh, from the president and the government as well, because I mean, speaking as a protester, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it, in my, it's the I'm I'm out here in the best interest of the country and my citizens. But and I'm, I'm just trying to understand your sentiments as a concerned well. Sri Lankan. How is it that the government can negotiate with you? Do you have a group? Do you have a committee? How is it that you give your representation to the present political establishment and tell them, look, these are our demands. You need to reach a middle ground. The protests themselves have organized groups where we've invited uh, elected representatives to actually come and, and discuss with us. As of now, it has only been with the opposition parties. Uh, the current president and the current government have not been a member of this, but we're more than willing to discuss. We're more than willing to have a forum to speak okay. with them uh, and discuss. It is them that need to come to us. Uh, right. and speak with us instead of attacking us. We, what, we what, one thing which resonates, uh, as all the gentlemen are giving their opinion, is to have an effective communication strategy for the present political establishment. Mr. Ashok Sajjana, Ramjad Malana, Dr. P. Sarvana Muthu, thank you gentlemen for joining us on the broadcast. There's some breaking news coming. And the Ministry of Home Affairs has given a go-ahead for PFI Patna case uh, to, take, to be taken over by the National Investigation Agency. NIA in the process of registering an FIR. That's the big news which we are tracking right now. That MHA has given a go-ahead for NIA to take over the probe. Arunima with us on the broadcast. Arunima, give, uh, give us more details and context to this case. This case investigation by Patna Police began as a case of radicalization. And even though NIA officials were on the ground associating with the probe, Officially, they were neither assisting nor investigating. However, during the course of the investigation, especially when phones uh, of the accused were put to forensic test, there has uh, evidence which has emerged which makes this a case of UAPA, the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. Hmm. And once those evidence emerged, it was clear uh, that this required uh, a cross-country probe, perhaps probe across our border as well. And that is the time when the Minister of Home Affairs stepped in and gave the go-ahead for an IA to officially take over the probe. We are told the agency is in the process of registering an FIR, which would then mean they take over the case officially. Arunima, uh, just trying to understand various layers of the story, when one talks about radicalization, uh, there is a financial nexus that needs to be tracked, a trail of people who are perhaps responsible. Could you take us through the critical aspects of this case, which is currently under investigation and all set to be taken over by NIA? So far, when the investigation began, it began uh, with the premise that this was a group which wanted to impart arms training to people who were interested in joining them. And they had somehow planned to subvert the Prime Minister's visit. That was the starting point. But as the investigation went further, a detailed web emerged of this, uh, this particular network trying to recruit more people for the cause of violence, giving them training in uh, use of sword, in use of uh, other commonly available uh, arms, uh, also martial arts. 
then uh, during the course of the scrutiny of the phone from one of the accused called up her Nupur Sharma's residential address emerged. Yes. Why that set the alarm bells ringing is because we have seen what happened in Udaipur, we have seen what happened in Amravati. Hmm. And that led them to finally, um, yeah, you know, look at, at the point of view of this case, not just being limited to radicalization, but on the verge of being a case which can be registered under UAPA, which means okay. on the verge of being a terror case. Thank so you. So that is the way. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you, Anima. Thank you so much for getting us all those details um, and the different aspects of that very crucial case, which is all set to be taken over by NIA. My colleague Arunimba reporting and getting you all the updates. With that, it's a wrap on this edition.